Hey everyone, uh, we're going to be going over Romance for Marsha, the piece that you guys are doing for your final. So I'm going to be breaking it down, kind of talking about it in detail and how we're going to be uh, attacking it. We've already started on that right hand exercise, hopefully, where we're playing our thumb and our A finger at the same time, both on the high E and the low E, then M, I, then A, M, I, and then we repeat. So the two outer strings, and B string, G string. That's the pattern that's happening all through the very first part. And then we have the melody after that. But we're gonna have to look at a couple of things. First of all, we're in three, four time. Three, four time means that there's gonna be three beats per measure. So we're gonna be counting one, two, and three. But in between each beat, we are gonna have subdivisions of triplets. So we're gonna have three notes actually inside each one of the beats. So for the first beat, we would have one lolly, then the second beat would be two lolly, three lolly. Some people count one, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three. Um, it's just a way to think about what's happening. At the very beginning of the music, there's a hashtag sign, right? That's the sharp sign, and that's indicating that all the Fs are gonna be sharp, right? So whenever we see that in front of a note, it's gonna change that note. Now, because it's used at the very beginning, that's a key signature, so it's telling us all the Fs are gonna be sharp unless we have something otherwise. So we will have a D sharp that we need to look out for. So if I was playing that very first measure, the first measure looked like this. One, two, three. Okay, so I have the E, the F sharp, and the G right there. Okay, and that's gonna, so let's look at this. Let's try it, let's look at the melody first. So the melody, we have E, and we have F sharp, and then we have G. Okay, and now we're gonna go over to fifth position. So we put our first finger, fifth fret, here we go. And then with my third finger on the seventh fret, and then first finger, and then fourth finger on G. Okay, so those are the very first two measures. We're gonna just try that. So I'm gonna count one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, just so that we know how long these notes are supposed to last. So we have one, two, three, one, two, Now, while we're doing the other part, right, the, these notes have to last for the whole beat. The other thing is, when we go back to that G, we wanna use our fourth finger. So when you look at the music here, you wanna follow the fingerings, because what they're doing is they're setting you up. Just like if we were playing a chord, right? If I was going from an E minor chord to an E major chord, right, I wouldn't wanna go one, two, and then switch over. I want to have two and three already down, and then just add my first finger. Okay. So let's try, here we go, we're going to try playing the first measure and the second measure together. So we have E, F sharp, G, jump over to fifth position. Okay. Again, the melody is E, F sharp, G, we have the B, the seventh fret, first finger on the fifth fret, for A, and then we have the G with our fourth finger. Okay, we want to get that. Now, once we have that part down, then we're going to be set up for the next part. Now, this, we have our fourth finger already down, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my first finger and place that on C, B string, first fret. I'm going to take my second finger and place it on the G string, okay, on the second fret there. And then I'm going to go ahead and now play this chord with the same fingering that I've been using, the right hand fingering. Now I'm going to take my third finger and place it on F sharp, like I played a D7 chord. It looks exactly like a D7 chord, it isn't a D7 chord. And then now we're going to put our fourth finger back on the G. Okay, so the third measure looks like this. Now we're at the fourth measure. With the fourth measure, what we're gonna do is you're gonna take your first finger and you're gonna move it up to the D string. Okay. So now you only have your first finger down on the D string. That's the D sharp. You're gonna have your second finger on the G string. 
and you're gonna have your third finger on the E string, okay? And so now we're set up, we're gonna play that. And then we're gonna bring our fourth finger back to the G on the high E string, and then go back to the F sharp. So we're just lifting, let's look at that again. It's this. We'll try it one more time, just that fourth measure. Okay, now let's try the third measure and the fourth measure. So here we go, we have that like D7. Okay. The fourth finger, then I go to the D7. Okay, and then I now move my first finger up to the D string. And I lift my fourth finger off. So I only have my third finger, bring my fourth finger back down. Measures three and four played without me talking this time. Okay, now in the sheet music, there's an error, okay? Measure five, okay? That's the second line, second measure. It says two. We're actually gonna, if you can cross that out and write three, that would be really helpful because we're actually gonna use our third finger here because it's already there, right? We just came from this. And our third finger's already there. We just lift everything else except the third finger and then lift your third finger. And you got through the first part. That is the very first part of the song, okay? There's two sections to this song and then an ending that's not too difficult. So let's look at that first section again. We're gonna play E. Now, here's what I don't want to see you do. I don't want to see this. It doesn't need to be played that fast. Actually, you can play it really slow. It just needs to be even. So, one, two. Fine, that's perfect. That's all you need. It's gonna make a lot more sense. Okay. Measure six, it's a little bit different. We're not gonna be using our A finger anymore. So instead what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be playing bass notes, P, and then M, I. And so you're gonna have a bass line. the bass but first let's look at that bass part so before we even do that let's do the right hand aspect and let's just focus on thumb and middle index thumb middle index the thumb is gonna play the bass note like I said middle finger is gonna play the B string your index finger is gonna play the G string that's it okay now back to the bass part that we were talking about, we're going to start with an E, then we're going to go to an F sharp, which is the second fret, just like it was on the high E string, F sharp, so here we go, E, F sharp, G, okay, now we have B, A, and then G, and that's just the very first two measures of that part. Um, let's try that now. So we have one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. Again, let's look at that. E, F sharp, G, B, A, G. Okay, now let's add the, the right hand. Okay. Let's look at the next part. Now the next part, here we go. Measure eight. We're gonna have our second and first finger down. Kind of like we're playing an A minor chord, except we're using our first and second finger, because our third finger is going to be used to play the C right here. So we have. So you're just pretty much setting up a chord. 
Then we're gonna go to a B7 chord here on measure nine. So I have my second finger on the A string. My third finger is on the G string. And here we go. First finger comes over here to D sharp. And I go back to the B. And then we're on measure 10. And measure 10 is gonna be your second finger on the D string, second fret. First finger on the A string, second fret. And you're gonna hold each one of these down. Third finger comes over to the G on the low E. Okay, and that's it. Okay, so let's look at measure 10 again. So we have two, one, three. And I'm holding those down as I play those, okay? Let's look back now at measure eight. Measure eight was where we have the first finger on C, the second finger on the G string, second fret. I go to my C on the bass string, A, third fret. Back to an open. And I go to that B7 chord. Go to the D sharp. And then I'm gonna play this E minor chord inverted. Let's look at that now. Okay, let's play that whole section. So we have E first, F sharp, G, B, e, A, G, A, B7 chord. Now we're gonna go to the E, B, e, G, and now repeats. finally get to the end. The end is just like the beginning. But when we get to this part, this very last part, what we're going to do is leave our fingers the way they are. Okay. Sorry, I just have to go so I can see the measure. This is measure 15. Okay, we're going to move our first finger over. Okay. So all the fingers are on the, the second fret. My first finger is on the D string, my second finger is on the G string, and my third finger is on the high E string, all second fret. I am just gonna go ahead and take my thumb and strum across. Okay, and now we're gonna play an E9 chord. And this chord's awesome. You're gonna take your first finger here, place it on the A string, second fret, which is B. Then you're gonna use your fourth finger to play the F sharp. Or you can use your third finger too if you'd like. Um, but it's the fourth fret on the D string. Okay, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your thumb and you're gonna play right here near the 12th fret. It's gonna kind of make it sound really mellow and you're gonna get this harp effect. Okay, so notice also a couple of other things in the music. It says RIT, that stands for retardando, which means to gradually slow down. So once you get to measure 14, you're gonna slow down a little bit. And then you have the little dot with the rainbow over it, that's a fermata. That means you're gonna hold the note longer than its value. So the first one's a quarter note, so you gotta make it longer than a quarter note. And the second one is a half note, so it has to be longer than a half note. So let me just go ahead and play that part really quick just so we can hear it. So measure 13. If I go to measure 14 and start slowing down, which is gonna give me time to move my finger over now. I'm gonna take my time to set up for the next chord. Over two beats. I'm good. And I'm done. Okay. When you're working on this, make sure that um, you work on everything slowly and you take it piece by piece. Do not try tackling the whole song all at once. Also, the other thing that you want to do, um, or you should be not worried about doing, is actually writing stuff down. So, if you need to write down what fret that is, write down what fret it is. If you need to write down what finger it is, write that down. If you need to know what the name of that note is, write it down, it doesn't matter. The only thing that I would ask is, is that you photocopy it so you have a clean version and then you have the version that you edited. Uh, the worst thing that could happen is that you edit it incorrectly and then you start playing everything wrong and then I'm like, hey, that's good, but you missed this note, that, that note, and then it'll be really hard to fix that. Also, if you want to play it for me before the final, 
and just send me, hey, I've worked on this part so far. Let me know. We could either do a Zoom lesson or we can just go ahead and you can just send it to me and I can just give you tips on what needs to be adjusted. If you're gonna, if you're gonna do that though, I need to see your right hand and your left hand just to make sure everything's uh, working the way it should. All right, if you guys have any questions, please let me know and I'll talk to you soon. Happy practice.